you are doing everything the latest science says, but yet your progress is barely noticeable and you don't even look like you lift. Yeah, well, that was my life for a solid two years. I was convinced that I had just bad genetics and that was just my natural ceiling. But that was far from the truth and I'm pretty sure that this is the case for you as well. And it's not that you're not trying, it's that you're trying the wrong things. And I'm pretty confident that I can fix this for you because I have done it for myself and I have already helped other people to fix it for them. So you are blindly following other people's recommendations because they are based on science and research. And I completely understand why you're doing it. It feels safe and secure. You have a question and there is a specific answer backed by science and research. So you just get it and integrate it in your own program. But there is a problem with it. The vast majority of hypertrophy research is done on completely untrained individuals under a controlled environment and most of the time the goal of any study is to examine one and only one variable and its effects in hypertrophy output without taking into account other parameters that might be compromised. I will take length and partial for example, while the results on set-to-set -set basis comparisons seems better than full range of motion. No research takes into account that you might not be able to reach muscular failure due to mental fatigue in a length and partial set. Yes, you might get better results in a controlled environment with a personal trainer guiding you through the pain in order to reach failure, but will you get the same better results training by yourself? Probably not. A little bit of a weird analogy, but I think it will get the point through. Just think that you want to test a sports car top speed and you put the car in a giant treadmill in a perfect room with perfect climate conditions. Sure, you will get an interesting number, but this number alone doesn't say anything about the car. You don't have any information on how the car can handle, for example, corners, how it can handle rain, potholes, all of that with a not so experienced driver behind the wheel. Let's see what you should be doing instead, depending on your experience level. If you're training consistently for less than two years, the answer for solid and consistent gains is pretty straightforward. You don't have to worry about optimizing your intensity and working with two or three reps in reserve and don't go to failure because these will incrementally accumulate your fatigue or about maximizing your stimulus to fatigue ratio and all of that. You just have to focus on three things. Consistency, program and training structure, and progress. You have to be able to go through your split without missing a workout for at least a month at a time. And if you're not able to do that, then probably you should switch your split to something more flexible. There are quite a few options that will work perfectly. Please stop caring about biomechanics and optimal exercises and start focusing on getting better and stronger in the basic compound movements in the 6 to 12 rep range without paying too much attention on mind-muscle connection. You have machines and isolation movements for that. If I was your coach, I would program something like that for you. And if you don't already have a structured schema in place that you're following, please feel free to use this. Also, you need to focus on progressive overload. And by progressive overload, I don't mean just adding weight or reps to the bar from week to week. I talk about it in depth in my previous video, so I won't dive deeper here. And no, you don't have to worry about your intensity or working within one to three reps away from failure. Progressive overload will take care of that if done correctly. This phase is all about learning your ways around training. Get to know the difference between the good pain of stimulus and the bad pain of discomfort. Honestly, for the first two years, the only science you need is the science of your logbook. Are you adding reps? Are you adding weight to the bar? Is your execution getting cleaner from week to week? These are the only things you should care about. Now, that's the point where actually taking into account science starts making sense. And still, no study can give you any definitive answer about anything. As you get more and more experience, you have to use science as a starting point when you are trying out things and observe the effect on your progress and your body. Let's see an example. 
The volume recommendation for any given part is 10 to 20 reps on a weekly basis. For the past four years, I've been doing six to seven sets for my quads, and they are my strongest body part. Could they have grown more with 15 sets, for example? In theory, yes, but in real life, my quad training destroys me. It's really taxing. If I was to do 15 sets, it would take away from my capacity to train everything else. So in total, my hypertrophy results would have been dramatically worse. The exact same mindset applies to everything else. Exercise order, exercise selection, training frequency, even exercise execution in some cases. Science is a great tool and you should use research as a compass, not a GPS. It can show you the direction, but you have to navigate yourself through the actual path. In order to keep making great gains as an intermediate, you have to shift your approach a bit and become more precise. Intensity becomes really important here. Progress is not as fast and you have to make sure that most of your sets are really close to failure, like zero to two reps in reserve. And believe me, you really suck at estimating how many reps you have left in the tank, especially for isolation movements and leg exercises. And I know it because I have been through it and 95% of my clients have been through it. I have trained guys where they would stop a set and they were like, oh, I cannot do another rep or I have probably two more. And then I urge them to grab the bar and keep going and they do another 10, 12, 15. So don't be afraid of fatigue. Be afraid of not doing enough. Experiment with your volume and try to increase it for the body parts that you want to prioritize. In this stage, I would only add one or maybe two sets every six to eight weeks and then observe how this change affects my progress. Am I feeling more pumped and sore after the gym? Am I feeling that the working muscle is really getting tired during the training? What does my logbook say? Are my numbers going up consistently? If the answer is yes, it means that you can still handle that volume and you can try adding another set. This is really important. Stick to the same schema for months and months on end. You should be doing the same exercises and focus on getting stronger and better on them. Now, the only reason to change an exercise is if you get stuck for a month or more. But other than that, if the progress is there and you feel your muscles working, then there is no reason to change something that is already working. You can really observe if something actually works or not, if you're switching things around, really frequently. Be patient and observe. I know that this sounds really boring, but this is the reason why most people never get past their early intermediate level, because they just get all their newbie gains and then reach out to science for fixed answers and they never learn how to observe and listen to their body. Finally, start experimenting with recovery techniques like deloads and active rest days, because if you're actually training hard, you also have to rest really hard every once in a while to make it sustainable. If you are interested in that, you can check out this video where I'm going over deloads and recovery in depth. See ya!